For nearly 50 years, Voyager 1 has journeyed alone through the cold, silent vastness beyond our solar system, a solitary emissary of Earth drifting farther than any human-made object in history. As the oldest functioning probe ever launched, it has ventured deeper into the unknown than any spacecraft before it. Long considered a ghost ship adrift among the stars, Voyager 1 carried humanity's scientific ambitions, fragments of memory, and whispered hope. Most experts assumed its mission was in its final stages, with its signals fading and its systems slowly failing. But then, something entirely unexpected occurred. Voyager 1 changed its course, not because of a directive from Earth, nor due to mechanical breakdown, but as if by its own volition. What made the event even more unnerving was what came just before the shift. Voyager 1 detected a low-frequency resonance, an eerie hum with no identifiable source, one that bore no resemblance to any previously recorded cosmic event. NASA's archives held nothing comparable. The sound defied natural categorization, and now with its antenna still pointed unwaveringly toward Earth, the spacecraft appears to be returning or being drawn back. The pressing question, what did Voyager 1 encounter in that abyss? What did it observe that compelled it to turn? To appreciate the magnitude of this occurrence, we must revisit the mission's origins. In 1977, NASA launched the twin spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, designed to exploit a rare planetary alignment that happens once every 176 years. Their mission, a grand tour of the outer solar system, using the gravity of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune to slingshot deeper into space. Voyager 1 was tasked with close flybys of Jupiter and Saturn, sending back the first detailed images of their moons and ring systems. These transmissions transformed our understanding of planetary science, volcanic eruptions on Io, the delicate ring complexity of Saturn, and the dense atmosphere of Titan, among many other revelations. Once Voyager 1 fulfilled its primary mission, it didn't stop. It continued on passing beyond Pluto's orbit, exiting the heliosphere and entering interstellar space, a region untouched by any other earthly creation. Year after year, its data stream grew thinner, more delayed. Yet Voyager persisted, committed to exploring, even as its power waned and sunlight became only a fading memory. Throughout its voyage, Voyager 1 transmitted readings of magnetic fields, plasma densities, and cosmic radiation. But in its 46th year, a startling anomaly emerged. Buried within plasma wave frequencies was a faint, continuous tone. Initially, engineers assumed it was equipment malfunction. But as the phenomenon repeated and was confirmed by multiple deep space network antennas, doubt turned to concern. The sound defied classification. It wasn't solar activity, wasn't cosmic microwave background, and didn't emanate from a traceable direction. Disturbingly, it pulsed with mathematical precision, like a structured message meant not to be heard, but to be noticed. Then came the course adjustment. No command had been sent, and no recorded system behavior could explain the reorientation. Yet Voyager had subtly changed its trajectory, its orientation shifting, as if to align itself toward an invisible object or presence. Analysts scrambled to uncover whether this could be an old subroutine, activated by outdated triggers or sensor glitches, but the onboard logs showed no such event. More disconcerting was the fact that Voyager's long-dormant camera system, turned off since it captured the famous pale blue dot image, was now pointed toward a seemingly empty region of space. No known stars, no catalogued galaxies, no anomalies, just darkness. What then was it looking at? Voyager 1's navigation capabilities are limited. Its tiny thrusters, unused in years, require substantial power and careful command. Yet data showed a definitive adjustment, as if guided or guiding itself. After the change in heading, things grew even stranger. Subtle variations in the transmitted signals began to appear. Timing and frequency alterations, first dismissed as noise, revealed repeating patterns buried in the data stream. These were not random errors. They displayed the hallmarks of purposeful design, binary sequences, harmonic structures, and recursive logic. Scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory called upon cryptographers, linguists, and artificial intelligence specialists. Some proposed that the transmission resembled an intelligent reply, 
perhaps a response to Earth's own messages broadcast decades earlier. One theory gained traction, that Voyager might have encountered an intelligence not based on electromagnetic signals, but one communicating through gravitational distortion, magnetic modulation, or another medium we've yet to comprehend. And that entity or mechanism might now be using Voyager as a relay. Behind the scenes, NASA convened confidential meetings. The internal consensus splintered. Some saw the data as nothing more than the erratic death throes of failing machinery. Others, pointing to the mathematical clarity and directional accuracy, feared something more significant, that Voyager had encountered an artificial or unknown astrophysical force. Each new burst of data reinforced the idea. Geometric symmetry, harmonic resonance, feedback loops echoing the probe's own systems, as if something was mimicking or interacting with Voyager. As whispers of the anomaly reached academia, independent, research began. Some physicists hypothesized that Voyager had entered a field where dark matter interactions were intensified, or perhaps a space-time distortion near an exotic gravitational anomaly. One paper in particular stunned the scientific community. Using advanced pattern recognition software, a team of AI researchers discovered that elements of the new signal mirrored parts of the Arecibo message, humanity's 1974 binary broadcast into space. The implication, someone or something, might be replying, using Voyager 1 as the return path. When Voyager launched, Carl Sagan and a team of visionaries included one of humanity's most profound artifacts aboard, the Golden Record. This gold-plated copper disc carried greetings in 55 languages, global music and diagrams explaining Earth's location using pulsars. It was never expected to be truly found, just a symbolic bottle in a cosmic sea. But if someone, or something, has decoded that map, then Voyager isn't just a spacecraft, it's a beacon. And it has been carrying Earth's coordinates through space for nearly 50 years. If that beacon has now been heard, the implications are extraordinary, not just scientifically, but existentially. Recent internal documents suggest NASA has shifted its approach. Staff are now instructed to refer to the event only as a data anomaly in official reports. But off the record, many admit deep concern. The phenomenon behaves less like a glitch and more like a dialogue. It adjusts, it reflects, it appears aware. If a probe launched half a century ago into the deep reaches of space has encountered something responsive, whether a signal, a field or an intelligence, we are no longer the sole observers. Something may be observing us, and if that's true, Voyager 1 has achieved what no other mission has. First contact, not necessarily with life as we understand it, but with an organized presence beyond the edge of human experience. The distorted signals, the unexplained reorientation, the mirrored patterns, they point toward a breathtaking and terrifying possibility. Voyager 1, a fragile envoy of our planet, may have connected with something. And if so, the story doesn't end in silence. It ends with a question that echoes louder than any discovery we've made before. What if we are not alone? What if we were never alone? Do you believe Voyager 1 has stumbled upon something beyond our understanding? Or is this merely the poetic unraveling of an aging machine?